Welcome to South Dakota. Do we have an epic boondocking spot for you in the Black Hills National Forest? On today's video, we are perched on a hilltop just outside our camping area, which is over in this direction. I'll give you a shot of that in a second. And uh, so we just kind of wanted to go through a few of the things that we've discovered while in search of dry camping or boondocking spots here in the Black Hills National Forest area. Yes. Well, we are just outside of Custer, South Dakota, which is kind of a central location, uh, Mount Rushmore, uh, the Needles Highway, mm -hmm. Sturgis is not too far from here. So really a great location. And we spent a uh, better part of a day, day and a half, scouting locations that we might be able to fit into. Now we have a bigger rig, a 35 foot motorhome. Uh, so there are plenty of spots that we found that are smaller that, you know, perhaps smaller rigs could get into. We're in Custer, uh, South Dakota. And after a couple of fails, I would call them fails. Well, not really a fail, but the first yeah. one was a fail. We had reservations at a campground that turned out to be completely unlevel, about 13, um, 13 inches. Crazy angle for us and we just couldn't make that work in our, our 35 foot class a so the next thing we found at the very last minute was an rv park and i mean very last minute we swooped into that and ended up staying there for about five days while we researched and tried to find boondocking or dispersed camping um, here in the black hills national forest and we should probably mention that it was a passport america site so we uh, got a decent discount we ended we up getting a weekly rate uh, I think we paid about $150 for mm -hmm. six days, something like that. Yeah. So, not it, terrible. Full it, hookups. It, exactly. And it fit the bill. It had full hookups, like you said. The only problem is, and we've been finding this a lot, this is happening a lot, is that we find RV parks that are very close to the highway or close to train tracks. And yeah. maybe that's just this, this part of the country. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, so after staying at that RV park, which again, I mean, it was a nice RV park, not a lot of frills, but it, it fit the bill. Yeah. We were really ready for some peace and quiet. Yeah, it's so, been yeah, it's been probably a month since we've had a lot of peace and quiet. Yeah. When we stayed in uh, Colorado, uh, it was pretty noisy. Mm -hmm. The little uh, city park we stayed at in, uh, in what Nebraska. Was that? Nebraska, Crawford, yeah. Nebraska, super noisy. Trains all day and night okay. blasting their horn through there and. Yeah, you know, a nice little spot, but mm -hmm. you know, just super noisy. So we were ready to get out someplace where we basically just heard the crickets. Yes. So if I'm silent for a minute, you can probably hear the crickets in the background. I love Maybe they, you can't. They, I hear them. They're, they're cooperating. Uh, so we have a lot of visitors in the area. We've got some horses uh, coming up here to our left. Or we do. Your left. <laughs> My right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that uh, we see a lot of that stuff up here. Uh, cows and uh, just uh, to the north of us here, uh, there's a big tree line out there, and we heard a bunch of uh, coyotes. I think they were coyotes. Uh, it had to have been a fairly decent sized pack of coyotes. Other than that, um, we've seen some deer, some bighorn sheep, some, yeah. some bison, things like that uh, in the surrounding areas. Right. So we were ready for some peace and quiet didn't quite know what this area, this Black Hills National Forest, had to offer, so we did some research. Um, and the first place that we started was with the National Forest Service. We went to the local uh, Forest Service office and, and spoke with a the ranger there. And she had some wonderful information. In fact, she happened to come from Arizona, which is where we are from, mm -hmm. and was very familiar with BLM and dispersed camping herself, so she completely understood what it was that we were looking for. Yeah, so she was uh, super knowledgeable. She provided us with uh, a lot of maps in the area. And what was even better is, uh, yeah, so they have a bunch of the paper maps that really uh, do a good job in outlining uh, all of the dispersed camping areas, which, I mean, there's some some rules here. You have to be a minimum of 100 feet uh, from a road, a numbered road, and no more than 300 feet. Um, there's some distances from streams, lakes, and bodies of waters and things like that. But um, anyway, they have a really cool app, and we weren't aware of this. It's an app called Avenza, mm -hmm. and you can download that to your phone. You don't ha have to have cell for service. It works off of your GPS, and it really kind of mirrors all the paper maps. So as you're driving through these areas of dispersed camping, it, uh, it pinpoints you on that particular map, and when you find a spot, you can drop a pin. 
Uh, so we drove, as we said earlier, about a minute. Super helpful. Yeah, super helpful. Entire day just kind of scouting out things. We scouted and, can't, and found uh, five spots that we thought would be pretty good for us. Yeah. Ultimately, this last spot we found is what we chose uh, to go to. Um, and there are literally hundreds, oh yeah, hundreds of thousands. miles of road yeah. where dispersed camping is allowed in the Black Hills National Forest. That was something that yeah. we had no idea about. You know, that said, uh, some of it is um, uh, okay for rigs like ours. Right. Um, I don't know, I, I couldn't give a percentage, but I would say, you know, probably the overwhelming percentage is probably more towards you know tent camping and smaller trailers mm -hmm. and things like that uh, you know we did find a few spots where we could get our 35 foot rig in uh, that said I would think most people would not do what we do uh, and are as, as perhaps as daring to get off into some of this um, undeveloped area as we are uh, and we've done a lot of that in Arizona so yeah. it's, it's it's not uh, it really doesn't scare us to get off onto these roads that are questionable to some. Well, something that surprised me as well, again, coming from Arizona where there's a ton of BLM and dispersed free camping, I expected once I heard that there is dispersed camping, hundreds yeah. of, of miles of it, that there would be yeah. rigs and tents set up all over, and that is not the case. Not the case. We haven't come across, no. in all of the searching and everything we've done and all the roads, we haven't come across a single other camper out here. We haven't. Tent camper, trailer, motorhome nothing we picked yeah. out our site it was anticipation of the fourth of july holiday and a weekend and so we picked five in the hopes that at least one would be available well to our surprise they were all available yeah. there is like brian said there is no one out here which is yeah. surprising again the, the spots that we chose people would look at those and not think that they would be even be suitable for camping you have to have some imagination and some daring and uh you know i'm gonna say that the last few days here have been super rainy. We've uh, had hail storms, tornado, tornado warnings. Yeah. And the spot we, we, we pulled into, we're about 250 feet off of the main road. Uh, it's pretty rocky. Uh, there are some spots that are muddy, but I don't think it's gonna give us any problem getting out. So again, people looking at the particular spot we're in, they would say, absolutely no way would we pull our rig in there. So you have to know your rig. You have to know how, obviously, you know, how it, uh, performs in wet and soggy conditions and some of these sites that, that, that we chose wouldn't be for a lot of people right. uh, so that remains to be seen whether or not we can get out because I have to back You're thinking positive though. I have to back 250 <laughs> feet down this uh, rocky semi muddy road it's not terrible I don't think it's we're gonna not have a bad though no yeah. and that's one of the reasons that we chose each one of the five sites is because yeah. it either had gravel in it or rock yeah. because we knew that yeah. it was going to rain and yep. we needed to take those types of precautions. Yeah. And we would encourage you to do the same thing. Definitely yeah. do your homework, check out the spot, um, understand what's going to happen if there is a storm or rain so you don't get stuck. Yeah, definitely study the weather because this time of year in South Dakota, although uh, a lot of the locals are saying this is the wettest it's been, yeah. they've never had this much rain this time of year, so lucky us, but uh, what it's doing is keeping the temperatures down, um, a lot of cloud cover, so when it does rain, things aren't drying up as quickly. So just right. keep those things in mind. Uh, do your homework, do your planning in terms of weather, mm -hmm. and know your rig, and um, and know your confidence level in getting in and out in and out of these spaces. So. Absolutely, and we do have a full solar package um, yeah. and batteries so that we can go off grid. Yeah. We also have a composting toilet, which allows us not to have to go in and, and find a dump, you know, within a few days. So, so the only limiting factor for us really is our water capacity which is 72 gallons i do have a 40 gallon uh, water bladder that we put down in the back of the jeep we can go to a campground or someplace and fill up with water and bring it back and pump it into our rig um, and then our gray and black tanks as shauna mentioned we have a composting toilet so we no longer need our black tank and i've combined the two uh, by using a, a valve so that really doubles our capacity uh, i think i have about 98 gallons of gray water which is a ton of capacity for us where we are is very close proximity to a state campground that has water um, they have some trash bins and, and things like that i think it's only about three miles down the road so that makes it nice and convenient and it's called comanche mm -hmm. campground which is the place shauna talked about earlier that we made reservations for that yeah that we had to cancel and get a full refund right which was awesome because our site was it was know, bad yeah. terrible and that <laughs> in fact 
No, it's no wonder. It was the only <laughs> site that was available for reservation the entire time we've been here. We should have known. For that, so and it's I obviously can, for that reason. If I can make a public service announcement, <laughs> yeah. if you visit a campground or an RV park, um, I think it's a wonderful service if you put your comments out there specifically yeah. about the site that you're in, yeah. if you find that it's unlevel, or if it was absolutely wonderful. Those comments are very helpful, especially for us who rely on, on um, apps like Campendium, All Stays, that type of thing. We rely heavily on it. Yeah. Um, in this particular site, there were no comments about Site 23, uh, but I made sure when we left that I put a comment in there about it being so unlevel. Extremely helpful. Yeah, it, it all depends on the size rig. There, perhaps some smaller rigs could have fit in there. They have the ability to, to really you know adjust their leveling quite a bit more than we can in our Class A, and uh, you know so it's it's just rig dependent. Yeah, and I was very specific about it not being. Not yeah. being a good site for yeah. our 35 foot. Not motor for home. a large motor home. No. Right. Oh, great for tent camping. In yeah. fact, the campground yeah. is beautiful yeah. and it's set back from the road. We we're really disappointed. Um, but anyhow, we found this spot and we could not be happier about it. And it's it's free. And uh, it's free. Well, 14 days. You know, you have to move on, but we're yeah. not going to be here that long. And. Uh, and it's in close, the other thing is it's in close proximity to just about everything yeah. that we wanted to see. Mm -hmm. It's in close proximity to Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse Monument, Custer State Park, several caves and national monuments in the area, Keystone, Hill City, and all of the breweries and wineries in that area. The Phil Mickelson, am I saying that right? Or is he a golfer? No, it's not Phil Mickelson, it's just Mickelson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's the Mickelson Trail, which is awesome phenomenal for bikers um, wish we had our, our e-bikes right now but we yeah. don't to have taken advantage of that trail so much and the town of Custer yeah the town, town of, of Custer which is so quaint it is um, two and miles down the road yeah it, it's a typical tourist town it used to be um, you know there used to be a big coal mine here and a railroad ran through um, those things uh, kind of changed the town now that that's all pretty much gone it's just largely a tourist town Although, you know, they have the typical amenities, a decent grocery store, gas stations. I uh, got my ears lowered where I was, while I was here. Uh, for those who don't know what ear lowering means, that means I got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have never heard that term before, so. Yep, got our laundry done. Laundry. Uh, yes. uh, so yeah, it, 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 it yeah, really has everything that we have needed. Uh, a, a few very decent hotels, lots of campgrounds around. Tons so. of campgrounds around us, yeah. And they range from, I would say, $35 a night upwards of 130 I think the yeah. KOA was probably on the more pricey side. Pricey, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of RVers, a lot of campers in this area. One of the, the big things that we wanted to really focus on uh, is living as inexpensively as possible. Mm -hmm. And we have a budget, and quite frankly, we've blown it. Uh, the last couple of months, it's been tough. You know, you kind of get in a routine. You got to get in the swing of things. So we've kind of blown our budget on a, on a couple of categories. So one thing that we wanted to make sure we started doing was seeking out a lot of more um, places to stay inexpensively. Mm -hmm. And if that means you know dry camping like this, then we want to do that. Yeah. Um, that's more our style anyway. It is. We like RV parks sometimes. Sure. It's you know uh, they're typically you know more crowded and. You have issues and things with uh, people's dogs and you know bad behavior and things like that. So, uh, you know, the reason not we, always there not are some all, not fabulous always. RV parks. Yeah, as well, not always. But. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean that's, that's, this is true. It was yeah. our desire to find quiet and peaceful and beauty, and we definitely found it with this particular spot. I mean, the views are amazing around us, and we'll give you a shot of of what we can see. We are literally up on a hill. Well, we're in the Black Hills, obviously, yeah. but we're up on top of a hill right now filming this, but our, our rig is also up on a hill and we have these amazing views and the grass, I keep commenting to Brian, I'm just, I'm in love with South Dakota, I really am. I never expected to see and experience what we have since we've been here, but the grass is this vibrant green. The trees are a dark green and with all of that, it's just, it's beautiful. You've got these rocks that just jut right out of the ground like this. Um, it's well, fabulous. Well, it's part of the reason the Black Hills uh, are named the Black Hills. The trees, uh, you can probably see in, behind us quite a bit. Um, they call it the Black Hills because it's such a dark green. It's not actually black, but um, I understand that's where the name 
yes. Black Hills came from because of the color of the trees. It makes it kind of look dark and black, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a awesome color. You know, and we talked about Northern Arizona. A lot of people are surprised that this is a this can be like a typical setting you see in, in northern Arizona as well. So w we were kind of used to this in northern except Arizona. Except the green grass. Yeah, except the green grass. <laughs> right. That, yeah. Yes. You know, we forgot to mention one of the most important parts. We have cellular and Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah we have decent uh, two bars of Verizon and about three bars of AT and T. Yeah. So uh, been able to kind of fine tune our cellular router so that we have. Uh, you know, Wi-Fi, no problem streaming Netflix, and you know, doing work on the internet. So it's been pretty nice out here in the middle of really, um, not necessarily the middle of nowhere, but you know, like several it, several miles from uh, from civilization. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the events and map, as you mentioned, I believe it's free. Was it free to download? It's a, it's a free download. Okay. Right. Okay. I thought that might be kind of important to mention. Yeah. We're very happy, as you can tell, with this particular spot. It's going to be hard to leave. We actually are heading out from here to the Badlands for additional boondocking. Um, and I, I believe that's in Wall? Yeah, it's just outside Wall, of Wall, Dakota. so the Badlands are about six or seven miles uh, south of Wall, South Dakota. And anybody who's been to South Dakota is familiar with Wall. You, you mm -hmm. see everything about Wall, about, you know, 100 or 200 miles from the actual city with all the billboards and things like that. So we're excited to go get some five cent coffee. Some free uh, ice water. Free ice water. Yes. And the maple donuts. And get some maple donuts. Goodbye, Keto. For sure. We're having a maple donut. Yeah. Yeah. I think the 23 pounds I've lost on uh, Keto is going to come back quickly, although I'm kind of maintaining. Yeah, so. we're maintaining. <laughs> we, have, we have exercised yeah. and been out and about more than we ever have in the past. That's part of it, yeah. yeah. So it's not only, you know, kind of watching what we eat, although we do kind of indulge occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly being much more active, walking the dogs five, six times a day, you know, doing our treks. So yes. it's certainly helping. Yes. This particular spot we're in, just about any rig can get in, no problem. Our 35-foot motorhome, it's 26,000 pounds, and you know I, I didn't have any issue pulling in there. No. So. Yeah. So if you like this video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and then you'll know when we put out another one. And we'll hope that we are being helpful and have information that helps you in your journey, either camping, adventure, um, full-time RVing, whatever that might be. That's our goal. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video, leave any comments, uh, ask any questions you might have, and we'll be sure to respond to you. Absolutely. And until then, we'll see ya.